thank you so much for watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and today we are talking to women who create. And our women are uh, Chris Hartman, who's here, and then we have Linda Mueller, and they are part of the Quilter Society. And I love that name. I just, you guys are the co-chairs of this. So tell us a little bit about how the name came about, because I think there's a story behind that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how the name came about, but when the Quilt Guild was formed several years ago, that was the name that it was given. Really? Mm -hmm. No, they were on it. Look, they were already using little play on words. I like it. Uh -huh. Okay, so tell us how you guys came to be part of this. Um, quilting world. Yeah. Yeah. Because this isn't like your normal quilting at all. <laughs> Well, what we have today here are called art quilts. Okay. But we started years ago just with our grandmother's quilts, like we. Oh, um, really? That everyone knows about. Yeah. Um, and I think I just saw an ad in the newspaper or the date, if the date was back there 30 yeah. years ago. 30 years uh, ago? You've I, been part of this for 30 years? Well, I, in the 70s it was established. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and I just went to a meeting. At that time, it was only like 20 people. And now we have close to 200. Over wow. Almost 250, yeah. I believe. Yeah. In, in the North State or all over? How, how far does this reach? Uh, we have quilters who come from um, mostly within the county, I would okay, say. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. Wow. And what about you? What's your story? How did you get into this? I got into quilting when I was working as a ranger in Yellowstone, snowed in for the winter, and <laughs> made my first quilt. Oh my gosh. And, um, but I've been quilting ever since, so that was uh, the late 70s, and have gotten more and more into the art quilts. I still like doing traditional quilting, but I enjoy the um, challenge of creating an art quilt also. And tell us exactly what an art quilt is, because as you guys can see, I mean, some of the, yeah, I mean, the, the detail yeah. in some of these, like I think this one, the women down here have real feathers inside of their, um, I mean, like, Head dresses on their yeah. dresses. Yeah. So tell, tell us what an art quilt, how's it different? Uh, an art quilt is sort of a unique a quilt that is not made from a pattern. It's okay. not a commercial pattern. It's something that the quilter creates and it can have other things besides fabric on it. Okay. So you will see um, stones and things like that over there. You'll see coins, mm. buttons, feathers on that one. Um, fringe on some of the others, pieces of leather, um, just a variety of different things, some um, yarn that looks makes it look like a jail cell here. Yeah, really so good. it's almost like a mixed media mm -hmm. that in the form of a quilt. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, right? yes. I mean, right, I would, yeah. this mm -hmm. would qualify like in an art show, I would think, as yes. more of a mixed media piece. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of unique because people think of quilts more as like their grandmother's quilts, the right. traditional Absolutely. quilts. Art quilts are really art, and it's kind of mm -hmm. um, nice to see them um, accepted as pieces of art. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so one of the things I think that's so important about you guys coming on today, and I don't know exactly what you call these, but you, this is basically the theme of her story. Right. Is that Th right? Yes, this was a quilt challenge this year for 2018, and we do um, a, we have a quilt show. We sponsor a quilt show every other year during even years, and um, as part of that, we usually do a quilt challenge. Okay. So um, we were the co-chairs for that, along with one other person, and came up with an idea of doing something for women's history to celebrate women's history, and there's a term called her story that means the history of women primarily as told by women. Mm -hmm. And so we are telling the history of different women, American women, in the form of quilts. Okay. So can you explain one of them that you guys brought here? I mean, I think you brought one. You wanna <laughs> tell us about it? I brought um, Marie Dorian. She's uh, over there. Um, this probably unfamous lady that very few Americans re, uh, recall or even are familiar with her name. She uh, was in the shadow of Sacagawea um, 
Everyone knows Lewis and Clark's story yeah. and mm -hmm. Sacagawea. Uh, six years later, John Jacob Astor financed a second expedition to go cross country to form um, a fort. Uh, and the fort became Fort George, but it's right now it's in the town of Astoria, Oregon, after mm -hmm. John Jacob mm -hmm. Astor and mm -hmm. the Astor Party. She was uh, the only woman on the second uh, trip. Um, she had two children with her. She was pregnant at the time. She delivered the baby during the, this trip across country. Uh, the baby uh, lived for nine days. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh. But she had the two boys with her the whole trip, and then she settled her and her husband. Her husband was uh, one of the uh, guides and interpreters on the thing, on the thing, oh, the expedition. Was she Native American? She was half. She was uh, uh, Iowa tribe, and then she was the, her other half was. Um, she was French, French. Canadian, the French, French Canadian, the French yeah. trapper stories and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Her husband's father was on the Lewis and Clark oh, expedition. Wow. wow. Um, so that was all tied together, sure. you know, but she's just been in that shadow of Sacagawea and right. Lewis and Clark's. Now, how did you guys decide which women you were going to actually, you know, make into a quilt? Well, we, uh, um, I started doing that and I started researching women and I wanted to get a wide variety of backgrounds, of time periods in history, and of ethnicity mm -hmm. so that people would have a lot of people to choose from. So I think we originally came up with about, we vetted about 130 different women. Wow. And the requirements were that they had to be American women whose contributions occurred in or while representing the United States. Mm -hmm. So we had some American women who had great achievements outside of the U.S., but they weren't included on right, our list right. for that. And so how many of these quilts did you actually have yeah. submitted? Uh, we, ha we originally had 73 people sign up, and um, for, a for a variety of reasons, we ended up with 30 quilts being finished, which wow. we were very happy to have. That's a lot of yeah. work. Yes, it is. And That's a the, lot women of work. the women had about 10 to 11 months to, um, to make their quilts. Now, what do you do with the quilts after? So now you have all of these quilts. What do you go around and do these exhibits, or what do you do with them? Um, these quilts will not be traveling. They were shown in our quilt show this April, and some will be individually shown, perhaps like at the fair. Okay. But otherwise, mm -hmm. they'll go back to the, uh, oh, the to the, the ladies maker. who maker. made them. Oh mm -hmm. wow! So what if somebody has never done anything like this, but they're like, you know, I think this would be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. What What do you recommend they? What's the path for them to get involved with you guys? Well, if, if they're not a member of the, of the Quilter Society of Reading, I would recommend that they come to one of our meetings. Uh, the meetings are held the first Tuesday of each month uh, at 6.30 at the Senior Citizen Center near Caldwell Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, come get involved that way and then find out more about quilting and art quilts. And so you don't never, you don't have to know anything. So if I walked in, you guys are going to say, "We're so happy you're here, Ashley. <laughs> We're going to teach you how to quilt." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. They have they that have classes. Great. They have people who will help. Um, wow. For, for this challenge, we actually gave workshops so that mm. people who hadn't made art quilts in mm -hmm. the past could learn how to do that. Oh, that's also. actually really okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any oh, hand? Do people do hand quilting anymore, or has that just gone the way of the dodo bird? <laughs> <laughs> well, I or think the dinosaur. There's, no, there's still people who do hand quilting, but um, certainly I think machine quilting has become much more popular, and you see that in more quilts now than hand yeah. quilting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are pretty amazing. They are. I mean, the like, how are you holding on that? Is the yarn actually sewn onto that little strip? along the way there? I think it is sewn and there's beads on there too to attach yep. that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what was really kind of interesting about this whole thing is there were women who are well known, for example, like Susan B. Anthony. Most people know her sure. story. Um, but for example, Deborah Sampson Gannett, she was um, a woman who disguised herself as a man to fight in the Revolutionary War. Oh, wow. Um, Mary Fields, this lady right here, was a woman who worked delivering, she had a star route delivery uh, route in Montana and delivered mail 
by Buckboard Wagon, and she wow. started doing that at the age of 60 for about eight years. Oh, oh good for um, her. Victoria mm -hmm. wow. Woodhull here uh, ran for president before women even had the right to vote. <laughs> So it looks like she was jailed for her efforts. She was. She, she and was. her sisters oh, wow. were publishers of a newspaper, and they also um, had. Um, they were invest. They had an investment company, I guess, on Wall Street too. But um, mm. she published some information about a notable man in society having an affair, and <laughs> in her newspaper. And she was jailed uh, prior to the election. So of course she was. Of course. Mm -hmm. So okay. <laughs> How, we could talk about these guys all day, I right? Know. I'm curious, though, I heard that you did something with the state parks, the California state parks. Oh, yes. In 2014, our challenge was the California state parks, and it happened mm -hmm. to coincide with their 150th anniversary. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, those quilts actually traveled for over two years, and the state parks um, worked with us, and they became our 57 quilts that we had finished um, became their quilts that they used at some of their anniversary venues. Oh, wow. And so you can actually, if you Google California State Parks 150th anniversary, mm -hmm. you can go online and look at an online quilt show that was done as a result of that. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty so impressive. That's so neat. It's nice to see this kind of an ancient art re kind of freshened you know it's yeah. not getting old and tired but right. creating these art quilts makes brings it to a whole nother yeah. freshness mm -hmm. level yeah mm -hmm. it has like an evolution a natural evolution mm -hmm. who knows what what it'll mm -hmm. be now do you guys have some sort of like backing on the back of these like here uh, is that yeah is all it? the quilts have a backing so a quilt technically is T typically three layers. Oh. It's your top layer, then you have some batting in between, and then a backing, and then the quilting, which is actually the stitching to connect all three layers together. Oh, uh -huh. I see. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I've been looking at that, and I'm like, <laughs> I think all of them have this backing. Okay. So That's if people want more information, oh, um, wow. we, our time has just flown by. Yeah. So interesting. What's the best way for people to find out more information? Um, they can either uh, check out uh, www.quilterssociety, two S's, and society is S-E-W, C-I-E-T-Y, quilterssociety.org, or they can come to our meetings the first Tuesday of the month. At 6.30 at, 6:30. at the Citizen, at, um, the Senior Citizen, Senior Citizen Center. Center. Mm -hmm. Okay, gosh, this was so interesting. I'm so glad you guys came. Thank Thanks. you. Thank well, you. Love seeing all this creativity. We're gonna do one more creative woman when we come right back from our break, so don't go away. We are back with Women Who Create, and today we are talking with Pinky Creighton, and she is the owner of Pinky Cosmetics, founder and owner, and gosh, you are doing a lot of great things with these cosmetics, as you guys can see here on the table. So I'm excited to kind of hear about like your journey into cosmetics. How did you get started? Yeah. <laughs> well, I started making products back in 2010. Um, the first thing I made was lip balm, and I started making that because I kept buying all these different brands of lip balms, yeah. and none of them seemed like moisturizing enough. Mm -hmm. I had to keep re reapplying after like half an hour. And um, so that was the first product I made was lip balm. And how, was that hard to make? It was a little tricky formulating the recipe, yeah. Have you always been like a creator, like with your hands and wanting to dabble? I have, yeah. My mom, um, she was an artist and she was very creative when I was little. She okay. was always painting and doing pottery and stuff like that. Okay, okay, mm. so it's in you. So it's you in grew you. up around it. Yes. yes. And you're located in Mount Shasta. Is that where you Dunsmere. grew up also? Oh, um, Dunsmere. I actually was born in England and I moved here oh, uh, to America when I was 10. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. okay. Okay, so, and that was probably a big shift coming, coming yes. right? Did you yeah. move to Dunsmere when you were 10? Um, first, actually, we moved to San Francisco, and then oh. McLeod, then Mount Shasta, and then Dunsmere. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. What brought your folks here? 
Uh, actually, my parents separated, and so my mom had family here in America, mm. and so that's what brought us over. Nice. Yeah. Wow. So you started dabbling with the whole um, the the lip balm, and is this mm -hmm. the lip balm here? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna have to get some of this for my daughter. Um, so you started dabbling with the lip balm, and this is vanilla coconut. Mm -hmm. What is? Oh wow, the ingredients look really good. What's in this? Tell us. Um, that's got mango butter, cocoa butter, shea butter, coconut oil, all oh kinds of great stuff. Vitamin E. I might have to yeah. take one too. <laughs> <laughs> that one's yours. Keep it, it sounds amazing. It, it really does. Yeah. So then you started moving into other stuff and. Yeah, I just sort of branched out. The next thing was lotion, and then um, in 2013 it took me a long time to branch out into soap, um, but I finally got the guts to do that because that's kind of a tricky product to make you're working with lye and and yeah. things it's a little bit hard and dangerous are these, things, are these tough to make and how did you know you wanted to go kind they of are a little bit tricky route? um well i just you know you look at your ingredients and the mainstream products and a lot of them have extra chemicals you really mm -hmm. don't need okay mm -hmm. so wow so so yeah. it looks like you've got some body balm, a body balm, right? A bo yeah, body, yeah, shea butter, butter body yeah. butter, and what's this one? This is a foaming sugar body scrub. Oh, I love these. So it foams and scrubs. Because it makes and a lot of really great bubbling lather. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, with green matcha tea That's powder. That's a new product. Ooh, really yeah. loving it. Yeah, <laughs> and these are my favorite. I'm guessing this beautiful rose is a bath bomb. It is. Yeah. Oh my that love was it. actually Very the creative. trickiest product to uh, learn how to make. That Why took me about that a year. The bath bomb? It was, yeah. You would think it would be the soap, but nope, yeah. the bath bomb was Why? the hardest to make. Um, just formulating a recipe that actually works took me about a year. Mm, wow. um, you know, you can sit there and make bath bombs and they start to dry and they'll crack or they'll get flat on the bottom and you want to have one that's really nice and round, you know, yeah. and, and hard and that's not going to yeah, break, break right. during yeah, shipping right. and stuff. Yeah. So shipping, I want to know. How did you get into the retail space? I mean, it's fine to make your own balm and everything, but you've got beautiful packaging, you've got bath bombs and soaps and body butters. Like, how did you get into the selling of the products? Uh, I actually started out on eBay. Um, mm -hmm. I actually started reselling things, things I didn't need around the house, and I got into selling a little bit of makeup and stuff like that. And then when I started making products, I got away from everything else and just started selling my products on eBay. Um, and then I found Etsy. I don't know how I Love heard about Etsy, Etsy but yes. it's fantastic. Yeah. It really is. And yeah. it's all for handmade, and so that became my spot. Oh, wow. So you are wet, uh, on Etsy, you're not, you're, it's Pinky's Cosmetics, mm -hmm. that's Correct. your page? Yes. Okay. And how, how's business? I mean, do you yeah. sell a lot of this stuff? Or? I do sell a lot, but believe it or not, I sell mostly on Facebook. Really? So oh. only a little chunk of my sales are on Etsy. Um, it's mainly just for looks. It's nice to have like a, mm -hmm. a professional site, looking yeah. store where mm -hmm. people can go and browse. It's sort yeah. of like a catalog. Totally. And um, and then, but mostly people just message me on Facebook and they really? like to chat about the products and put their order in that way. So. Wow. This would be really, so do you have like any place that people can, can I decide, I'm going to try that, bot, that body butter because yeah. I always need butter. Lotted <laughs> butter, always. No, um, I put some on earlier. It's wow. lovely. I mean, this actually is you so don't creamy need and much. soft. Oh, I don't? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. A You'll little goes out. a long way. Whoops. Watch you might have happens. to go up the arms. That's okay. I'll go up the arms. <laughs> put it this on is, your arms. So you tell us what's, it. yeah. Yeah. So this, this has, um, it so it's mostly organic shea butter, and then it's got coconut oil, vitamin E oil, mm. and either fragrance oil or essential oil, depending on what the customer wants. My skin is it's glowing. Glo oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Really and moisturizing. Then it in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Because you don't have petroleum in it, I'm guessing. No, I don't yeah. like petroleum products. Yeah. So, right. and that was in a lot of lip balms, so that it's was mostly one of the in lip balms. ingredients yeah. okay. I was yeah. trying to avoid. This smells so good. I feel like we're kind of like doing like a YouTube <laughs> so tutorial. <shiny>. Like, <laughs> you know, we're doing a product review. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is so product. Whipped shea butter. I know. Body butter. I whip air into Black that. Blackberry like Merlot. Mixer. So you know Do what you really? Missing. Like yes. whipped cream. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's so hard. So it makes it fluffy. So if that yeah. wasn't whipped, that would actually be less filling in the jar. Yeah. So a lot of that's like air. It makes it really light and fluffy and nice and. And I mean, texture. gosh, it's, I mean, it, you kind of got rid of the, not that I don't like the shea butter <laughs> smell, but you kind of got rid of that. And do you get the shea butter in like one of those big blocks? I get it in 
the big block. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, like 25 wow. pounds at a time. Yeah. Because wow. it's actually really hard to work with unless you melt it down. Yes, oh. it has to be melted down. I use it for hair. That's oh, why really? I like, yeah, yeah. That's why I like, I love this. And nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that, that smells nice. really good. And I like to get the raw kind, not the refined. Yes, so the raw has like all the good. What's the um, Raw shea butter has all the good vitamins and minerals mm. and all that stuff in it. And I feel like when it's refined, they just kind of they take all that good stuff out. Mm -hmm. And I think the main reason they refine it is because people complain about the smell of the shea mm. butter. Um, but you can just throw some essential oils or fragrance oil in it, and it smells great. How much is know. that? Because I want to. I want that. And so, I'm sorry, I'm claiming. I'm claiming everything. <laughs> up here I'm now. actually giving <laughs> all these products to you later. Are you really? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. But, that um, smells amazing. The body butter is 12 bucks a jar. Really? Wow. So, yeah. so now when you mention you a promotion, are you running that on Facebook? Are you doing Facebook um, ads or from it's a business? Everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on my Facebook. I have a makeup group on Facebook actually where um, girls just get together and they talk about makeup and skincare and hair care and all that stuff. And Do they can sell makeup things as well? there. Not yet, but that's on the to-do list. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I see your little yeah. lipstick and stuff. Oh, I'd love yeah. to be making this from scratch. It's yeah. on the to-do list. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. I mean, this this stuff smells so good, and it is really yeah. working. And Thank I can you. tell you, as a black woman, that this is truly working. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it is. I, it is. And I, I can tell you, as an old woman, this is truly working. <laughs> <laughs> we are <laughs> Jews. <laughs> An old white woman. I know, yeah, right? I mean, you gotta, you gotta call it like you see it. It, it really is working. It feels yeah. really good. So we keep talking about natural, like, I'm curious, is this, are you using, um, natural is a funny word because drugs are natural, it is, right? It's right. so, very tricky, So tricky what is your thing. kind of, I think really more than like, is it organic or whatever, is what's your intent behind creating these products? Yeah. Um, aside from just having a lot of fun making them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as the products that are going into it, what's your intent? Yeah. It's, yeah. So um, I just feel like with the mainstream brands, I mean, there's some good brands out there that are more natural like mine too, but the majority of them have excess chemicals in them. I just don't think we need it. Yeah. And um, so you're going to look at this and you're going to say, well, look at that. That's a bright color. No, the color's not natural, but most of the other ingredients in that bath bomb are natural. Mm -hmm. So You're I've left to out. take irritants out. Yes, mm -hmm. there's no parabens in any of it. Um, also, all my products are vegetarian. Oh, wow. With about half of them being vegan friendly. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, the, the everything, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just so impressed by how well it is. <laughs> nice. I'm so glad you like it. Yeah. yeah. So now, yeah. starting your business and everything, I mean, you've been doing this, how long have you actually been like doing, I'm starting a business, I'm going to do this brand. I mean, you've got your labels and your packaging. How long have you been doing all of that? Um, well, I mean, everything started in 2010, okay. so with the lip balm, but that was just a hobby back then. Yeah, that's you what know? I mean, you got so serious. So I guess it got serious in probably 2013 when I took the jump and started making soap. Mm. Okay, and now this is what you do full time. Yes. And yeah, well, people buy it on Facebook. Stay at home mom business. Yes, that's good nice. job, that's amazing. You're you're selling it on Facebook, you're selling it on Etsy, Etsy, e -T -S -Y dot com, mm -hmm. uh, under your name, Pinky's Cosmetics. And then where else, like, do you have any local Local merchants that are carrying your, your um, product? Not yet, and I've been asked, but they want a high percentage, so yeah. I'm kind of just like selling, you know, on my own. Right, you keep right, it right. with the online marketplace. Yes, yeah. and I do really well that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so and that's, that's great. exciting. What would you say to someone, and I don't know how much time we have, but how, what would you say to someone who's thinking about starting up a cosmetics business and, you know, because you're, you're experimenting and trying things out? <coughs> um, I would say, you know, do lots of research online. Google's a great tool. <laughs> yeah, it is a great tool. <laughs> and, um, and YouTube videos and stuff. And, you know, just really put in the time researching first and make sure you do it right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, especially with soap, because soap is a little dangerous to make. And, is it really? And tricky. Yes, because you're working with lye. I make it like people's grandmas did back in the day. Wow. You wow. Know? So when you say dangerous, you mean for your hands or for? Just dangerous while you're making it, working with the lye. Um, Basically, this is like, this is science to make soap because really? you get a pot of lye and you get your oils and your butters and you're mixing them together and they're doing a chemical reaction which is called saponification and that's what's actually turning into soap mm -hmm. is that magical mm -hmm. kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of tricky. Um, safety first. 
Safety first. I love yeah. that. She's like, and I'm going to end it on that note. <laughs> yeah. Person. Well, I've never, okay. I, I bought lots of natural soaps yeah. at farmers markets, but I never realized that it was a tricky kind of it is. thing yeah. to do. So that's and a new awareness. Safe, safe now, now that it's cured and, and everything, it's good to go. Okay. Yeah. So I was going to ask you. The process you. is yeah. Yeah. a little okay. hard. So, okay. We need to make sure everybody watching, <laughs> we're almost, can believe the time's almost gone. Oh, wow. Uh, we need to know how they can get a hold of you. Um, okay, so uh, Facebook, I have my Pinkies Cosmetics uh, fan page, Etsy.com, Pinkies Cosmetics Shop, um, and Instagram. Okay. okay. And what's your what's your um, handle on Instagram? Same, Pinkies Cosmetics. Okay. Pinkies, Pinkies. Cosmetics. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. You could Google me and probably find a whole bunch of. Okay, yeah. I love it. I yeah. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this with us. Thank yeah. you for having what me. What another great show, right? Yeah. With women who are creating. So we hope you'll be creative this next week, and then be sure to come back. Where we'll meet you right here on the forum.